Earlier this year, in Dublin, governments took a bold and visionary step when they negotiated a treaty banning cluster bombs. I see no objections. The convention is adopted. There's a lot to celebrate. We've achieved something extraordinary here. It's a mix of disarmament law and humanitarian law and humanitarian action, helping affected communities, something that will make a huge difference in the lives of millions of people around the world. So we should celebrate, but we should also recognize that the job has just started. The most important step that governments can take now to protect civilians from cluster bombs is to sign the treaty in Oslo this December and ratify it without delay. My son Travis was a U.S. Marine, and he was deployed to Iraq during the initial invasion in 2003. And then in May, mission accomplished, war was over, and uh, Travis was supposed to come home, but he was part of a munitions team and he called me to say that he would not be coming home, not right away. He had volunteered to stay to clear landmines and unexploded ordinances. And he said, Mama, you are safe. And uh, yeah, I love these guys. And I really, some of them don't really know what they're doing. And so I need to make sure everybody comes home. <laughs> the funny part was, everybody came home except him. The recent use of cluster munitions by both Georgia and Russia in the recent conflict over South Ossetia is an unwelcome reminder of the urgency for this ban. Human Rights Watch was the first NGO on the ground and we were the first to document the use of cluster bombs by both the Georgian and Russian sides. And again, as we have in Kosovo, Afghanistan, Iraq and Lebanon, it's seen a repeating pattern. People were killed during the time of the attack and people were killed after the attack when they started interacting with the duds. This repeating pattern can only be addressed by the treaty, which has a very strong prohibition on the use of cluster munitions and requires stockpile destruction. These weapons cannot be used legitimately, and the conflict in Georgia just proved it once again to us. On 3rd of December 2008, we expect more than 100 countries to gather in Oslo to sign the most important humanitarian and disarmament treaty at one of the most important political and humanitarian events of 2008. The signing of this treaty is a victory for international humanitarian law and disarmament, but the real winners are the thousands of people that will never have to lose lives or limbs to cluster bombs in the future. This treaty has been driven by cluster bomb survivors and nations affected by cluster bombs. Because of this, the treaty contains the strongest provisions to assist victims that have ever been laid down in international law. I can't tell you how happy I am, how impressed I am with the people who've brought it forward and pushed for it, how impressed I am with the governments who've said, um, you know what, we're not going to take part in this weapon anymore. I agree with you that innocent civilians should not be the majority of people killed by weapons, and that's what this weapon does. Humanity has gone way beyond this. We believe that the widespread signature of the Convention on Cluster Munitions this December will stigmatize this weapon so that every country will have to obey this standard. This weapon is going to be seen as unacceptable for all countries and all cultures around the world.